Hey guys, so I'm going to be talking about Bag of Bones, which is based off the novel by Stephen King. And I swear one of these days, or the next video, I will do a negative review because I have one in mind and that's what I was originally going to do today. But last night I watched both parts of Bag of Bones. It's in two parts. One is 79 minutes and the other is like 82 minutes. Um, so it's basically a three hour movie, but I believe it was meant for television because there's like commercial cuts where you can tell it went into a commercial. Um, so I don't know where exactly it aired first, but it's on Netflix right now if you are interested. It has some pretty big actors in it. It has Pierce Brosnan and it has the woman who was in Amityville Horror, the remake one, the newer one, the blonde lady. Uh, she's in that and um, a couple other big ones. So uh, I figured it would have a good reputation just because it had bigger actors, bigger budget. Now I did really love it and the reason is it was so scary. It was really scary. I haven't seen something really that disturbing in a while and it definitely has been a while since I've been really freaked out. I watched part one by myself and it totally freaked me out. Like I was so not expecting that. I cried a couple times. It's definitely a very depressing movie. I don't know what to call it. It's like two episode show but it's like a movie so I'm just gonna call it a movie. It's very depressing um, and there is some very disturbing scenes in it. There's a lot of like, zo not zombie faces, but like rotted faces. Um, there's a rape scene in it, which is horrifying, which is in part two of it. Horrifying. Now, to the plot. I didn't realize there was a cat in here. There's a, okay, the plot is super complex. You definitely, it's definitely one of those movies you have to sit down and take notice of what's going on, otherwise you'll be completely lost. There's so much going on, everything connects in the end, so if you're confused halfway through, like what is happening, who is that, like it all comes together um, because there's some really weird scenes, Stephen King-esque, it's definitely Stephen King, you can tell. Um, the air of it and the just the whole vibe of the movie is very Stephen King. Now I never read the book, I own it and now I really want to read it because it's super scary and I thought it was more of a drama type book because I know he's done some of those where they're not horror based but I don't think this is one of them. I think I heard it was so I wasn't expecting this movie to be scary and then when it was I was completely blown away. So the plot, very very complex. It's about a guy who's a writer uh, named Mike and He's a very famous writer and you know Stephen King does that. I mean obviously Misery was like that and um, what happens, I'm going to describe the beginning. It's not necessarily a spoiler that's in it but it might take away some of the impact when it happens so if you don't want, if you want to go in fresh and clean with no idea at all like I did, you can stop watching this part um, because I'm going to talk about the plot so you may or may not be confused later. Anyway gonna get going just warning you it's not a spoiler I'm not talking about the whole movie in the end but it'll have less of an impact if you watch it after I say it but it's not gonna like ruin the movie so he is at a book signing and um, basically what happens is his wife gets in an accident I'm just gonna say that um, gets in an accident and dies and he is broken completely 100% broken. He turns to alcohol, um, but then his, after the funeral, his publisher calls and says, you know, there's a bunch of other names on the list. Um, you're going to lose your number one spot or whatever it is. Um, you're going to lose your spot on the list of famous writers and whatnot. You need to start writing again and produce a really great novel. And he gives him three months. And if you're a writer, three months to write a whole novel is in Insane. Insane. Like, I, no, that doesn't happen. So, he has three months, basically. He's in his house and everything's, like, he doesn't clean anymore. Everything's trashed. He drinks, um, but then he gets a phone call talking about his house that he inherited by a lake. Um, and he decides to go there to write the novel. So he goes there and there's some interesting activity while he's there and I don't want to go too in depth about the plot and his dreams and everything but he um, sits down and tries to write. He's not inspired but he looks at his wife's picture and he gets inspired. He starts writing um, so he realizes his wife is his inspiration and he really misses her a lot and it's really sad. So there's like ghostly activity throughout 
the house and it's really creepy and like really creepy and it's really scary um, that's essentially like part one of it um, he's in the house and whatnot he runs into this woman who has a daughter and um, the grandfather of the daughter is trying to take her away um, for custody and you found out find out why exactly at the very end I'm not gonna say anything about why um, just know that he's fighting for custody and um, the ghost or whatever wants or whatever's in the house it's his wife's wife's spirit I just said that really weird <laughs> that was weird I like bit my lip his wife's spirit's like in the house saying help her and that's helping the blonde woman who's in Amityville Horror I can't remember her name I think it's Madison or Ma I don't know <laughs> I totally was not paying attention to her name um, I know I'm gonna get hate for not knowing her name anyway he decides to help her with the custody and everything and um, so yeah that's essentially it and then um, it's really confusing at the end like I was so lost on what was happening but then once it completes like the movie you get it and you understand what it's about so if you watch it and still have any questions feel free to message me or comment and I'll try and explain it as best I can because it's kind of confusing. Um, you really have to pay attention but it's a really great in-depth plot. The acting was really amazing so I definitely would recommend it and I promise next time it will not be a recommendation and I'll probably post that next Saturday or Sunday or whatever um, but it's not a good movie but I'm going to talk about that. Anyway that's all I pretty much have to say. I don't want to talk any more about the plot because it'll give stuff away. But that's essentially a, he's a writer, goes to the cabin, house, whatever. And there's creepy stuff, so um, in a nutshell. Um, but it's definitely really a great creepy, creepy movie if you're into that. And if you um, are craving something kind of disturbing, it's definitely a good one. But the rape scene is really really disturbing just a heads up so if you I mean obviously no one's really into that but if it really really bothers you you might want to turn it off when it comes on and you'll know when it's gonna happen um, but yeah that's basically it I have to say I hope you enjoyed this movie I hope you check out bag of bones I'll have a link to it directly to Netflix if you have Netflix um, you'll be able to access it and uh, watch it and let me know what you guys think in the comments and let me know if you read the book and have watched it because I'd love to know if it's similar at all because I really want to read the book too so I'm probably going to do that but anyway I hope you enjoyed it I'll talk to you guys later bye